Hello again, and welcome to Lecture 7 on creating a WebLogic domain. In this course, we're going to run through creating a domain using WebLogic's configuration wizard. So let's get started. All right, so I'm going to bring up my terminal window. I'm going to navigate to the U01 Udemy home directory. And in order to create a WebLogic domain, we need to run the configuration wizard. Now, this is a shell script that's going to launch a wizard-driven UI that will walk you through the creation of a WebLogic domain. So let's go ahead and navigate to the Oracle Home directory. So the configuration wizard is located under Oracle Home slash WL server slash common slash bin. If you do a listing in here, you're going to see some shell scripts. The one that we want to run is config.sh. Now, if you're on Windows, this is going to be config.exe. The first thing you want to do is define the location of the domain that you want to create. So for the purposes of this course, I'm going to create my domain under the U01 Udemy parent directory. So I've got U01 Udemy slash domains slash base domain. Now base domain will be the name of our domain. You can name this whatever you'd like, but for this course, we're going to use the default name, which is base underscore domain. Go ahead and click next. Now the next page that comes up is the templates page. So within WebLogic, you can create a domain based off of a number of templates. Uh, the templates that we want to use are the basic WebLogic server domain template. And this defines a basic configuration of a WebLogic domain. Templates are used to speed up the configuration and creation of a domain. So go ahead and make sure that basic WebLogic server domain is selected and click Next. So on this next screen, we need to define a username and password for the administrator account for WebLogic. This account is going to be used to manage your WebLogic domain. It'll be used to start up your WebLogic server and to log into the administrative console, which we'll do later on in this lecture. So for this course, I'm just going to use the default admin username, which is WebLogic. And for the password, it can be anything that you want. There are some requirements that you can see down here. Uh, at least eight alphanumeric, whoops, at least eight alphanumeric characters. At least eight alphanumeric characters and one number or special character. So I think I'm just going to use WebLogic123. That's pretty standard. Now, if you're going to do this for a production and system, I would recommend a strong password, of course. But for development, this is just fine. So once you have the password defined, go ahead and click Next. OK, so this is slide four of the configuration wizard. You can create a WebLogic domain in two different modes. The first mode is development mode, and then there's production mode. With development mode, this is strictly used for development and QA environments. And production mode is more a more secure configuration of WebLogic. It requires you to enter a username and password for when you start up the server, and there's ways to to automate that to some degree, and it does not pull for applications for deployment. So in development mode, there's actually what they call an auto-deploy directory. So if you're doing a, a rapid development, rapid prototyping, um, continuous integration type model, you can drop your applications into a directory, and WebLogic will automatically deploy that. That feature is only available in development mode and not in production mode. So for the purposes of this course, we're just going to select development mode. So take the default here. And then this option down here for JDK, uh, you can see that the installer is defaulted to the JDK that I installed in the previous lecture, which is 170 update 75. If you have another JDK that you want to use, you may select this option and browse to it. Hopefully, in your case, it's selected the JDK 7 that you installed in the previous lecture. If not, go ahead and browse to it. So once you've selected the JDK, go ahead and click Next. And on the Advanced Configuration page, you have the option of modifying the settings for the Administration Server, Node Manager, and the Managed Servers, Clusters, and Coherence. 
we're not going to do that as part of this configuration wizard. We're going to modify these settings in future courses using the administrative console. So go ahead and leave these unchecked for now and click next. This is the review screen. So this is where we're going to review the settings that we've previously selected. Um, nothing out of the ordinary here. If we click on the admin server, you can see the default settings for the admin server. So the listen address is just all local addresses. This is the default web logic port 7001. And the name of the server is admin server. Like I said earlier, we can change any of these settings after we've created the domain through the admin console. So go ahead and click create down here at the bottom. And the domain creation process is fairly quick. Once you see the domain created successfully message, go ahead and click next. And on this review screen, it'll tell you where that domain was created. So this is what we specified in the beginning of the install wizard. This is our domain home. And this URL here is the web address for the admin console. And after we've start up the admin server, we'll be able to access the admin console using this link. So go ahead and click finish. And that's it. We've created our WebLogic domain. So let's bring up our terminal window. I want to show you where the domain was created. So you can see that there's a domains directory in our Udemy parent directory. And within this domains directory, we have the base domain, which is the domain that we just created. If I go inside this domain, I just want to show you the, the uh, overall directory layout. I just want to point out some important uh, directories here that you should be aware of. So within the base domain directory, there's a servers folder. So if we go into servers, this servers directory is going to contain a list of all the WebLogic servers that you create. When you create a WebLogic domain, the only server that you'll see in here is the admin server. When we create additional managed servers, they will appear in this directory. If we go into the admin server folder, or directory, excuse me, this is pretty empty. Uh, there's only a security directory in here. When we start the admin server up for the first time, we're going to see additional directories created in here, including log files. So you'll find log files for the admin server and the domain in this directory, and I'll show you that afterward. Another directory to be aware of is the config directory. So the config directory maintains the configuration for every server and every resource within your domain. This is a very important directory, and I recommend that you do not modify any of the files in this directory unless you absolutely have to. Modification of any of the domain configuration, including these configuration files, will be done through the admin console. So if we can look at the config XML, the config XML is the main configuration file for WebLogic. It is within this XML file that all the servers and domain configuration is specified. And so it's XML based. All these elements correspond to configuration options within the admin console. So you can see here, as an example, we have the admin server defined as a server XML element, and that is all. Let's quit out of here. We're going to go into the bin directory. Inside the bin directory are a series of shell scripts for starting and stopping WebLogic and Node Manager. So right now, let's go ahead and start WebLogic. And this is really simple to do. There's a single start script to start the admin server, and that's startweblogic.sh. And if you're on Windows, it'll be .xc. So let's go ahead and execute this script. And you'll see output from the startup process. And what you want to see, you'll know that your WebLogic server has been started successfully and is running when you see this message. Server state change to running. This means your server is, is running inaccessible. Now if you look up a couple lines, you will see these channel messages. 
So channel default is now listening on, and here's the IP address and the port number that the WebLogic server is listening on. And then after that are the protocols that it will respond to. So IIOP, T3, which is a WebLogic proprietary protocol, LDAP, SNMP, and HTTP. So if you want to know what port your WebLogic server is running on, you can look for this message in the output. So I'm going to open up another terminal window. Okay. And I want to show you the log files. So we're going to go back to our domain home directory. And then let's go ahead into our servers directory. You can see now that there's many more subdirectories that were created once we started up the admin server. Let's go into the logs directory and do a listing in here. You're going to see that there's an admin server log, which is the server log for the admin server. There's an access log, which is actually just an HTTP access log. So if I can cat this, you will see that there's this is empty. We have not made an attempt to access the admin console, so we're not going to see any of those HTTP requests in this log file yet. And there's also a base domain log. This WebLogic has multiple log files and multiple logging mechanisms. So individual WebLogic servers have their own log file. And the domain itself has a, an overarching log file. So if we look at this base domain log file, you can see that we have a, all the logging from when we started up the admin server. And you can see that the, excuse the, uh, the wrap around here, but we can see that we have the running messages in this log file. So what I like to do when I start up WebLogic, if I start the process up in the background, is I, I'll tail one of these logs just to see what's going on when the server starts up to make sure that there aren't any issues and that the server starts successfully. OK. So now that we've got this server up and running, let's go ahead and access the console. Let's go open up a new window. So let's go ahead and access the admin server. The URL is going to be http colon slash slash. And if you're running the WebLogic server on your local machine, it's going to be localhost. You can use localhost colon the default port, which is 7001 slash console. You'll get a message that WebLogic's deploying the console application for the first time. This happens every time when you start up the WebLogic server for the first time. And here's the login screen for the admin console. So go ahead and use the username and password that you specified when you ran through the installation wizard. So in this case, for me, it's WebLogic for the username and WebLogic123 for the password. <clears throat> now, it may take some time to log in the first time you do this. WebLogic is compiling some of the JSP pages that are associated with the console application the first time around. All right, so now that we're in, this is the admin console. Congratulations, you've accessed the admin console and you got a WebLogic server up and running successfully. So from within the console, you can access the, envir the WebLogic environment itself. So if we click on environment under here and then click on servers, you'll see a list of servers that are part of your WebLogic domain. As you can see, there's only one server, the admin server and it gives its state and health check and the default listen port. Now this table is customizable. You can specify you know, certain attributes that you'd like to view. This concludes the Creating WebLogic Domain lecture for this course. Uh, Follow-on courses will go into more detail with the admin console and we'll go over creating additional servers, creating WebLogic clusters, deploying applications to WebLogic. So stay tuned for those courses. Thank you very much. So I hope you found this course informative and educational. Uh, I, I welcome all comments and feedback, so please use the feedback feature in this course to, to send me those directly. Thank you very much.